Many cities around the world have just one subway operator, but some cities will have more than one. Tokyo, the capital of Japan and the world's largest city, has two separate agencies that together form the Tokyo subway network. First, there's Tokyo Metro. It operates nine out of the 13 lines, and every day it carries 6.5 million passengers on its 195 kilometers of tracks. Then there's the Toei subway, whose four lines carry 2.8 million passengers on 109 kilometers of tracks. In some ways, these two companies operate as completely separate systems. They charge their own fares, meaning that at most stations, if you're transferring from one system to the other, you have to go through separate fare gates. However, in recent years, the two agencies have moved closer together in terms of integrating their service. You can buy a shared day pass, for example, that covers both the Tokyo Metro and the Toei networks. At one station, they removed a separating wall between two platforms so passengers can now transfer from the line of one system to the line of the other without worrying about fare dates. There's even one short section where trains from the two companies share tracks. But despite these improvements, they remain two separate entities with their own separate identities. Why? Well, the short answer is one is a private company and the other is run by the government. The Toei subway is directly run by the government. Tokyo Metro is technically a private company whose stocks are owned by the Japanese government, the Tokyo government, and then private stockholders. But the long answer? Well, that's what this video is all about. I grew up in Japan, lived there for 10 years as a kid, and honestly, I had always taken for granted that there were two separate subway operators. I never stopped to ask why. So when doing research for this video, I uncovered a complex and fascinating history that not only explains why the trains are the way they are, but also why the entire urban fabric of Tokyo is the way it is today. The first subway in Tokyo opened in 1927, between Ueno and Asakusa stations. Today, this is part of the Ginza subway line, but back then it was known as the Tokyo Underground Railway, a private company created by a man named Noritsugu Hayakawa. He had visited London in 1914 and, being impressed by their underground, successfully lobbied for Tokyo to get its own underground railway. But for this story, we actually have to go back even farther in time to when a different railway opened, one that's not even part of the Tokyo subway network. You've probably heard of the Yamanote line before, this is a commuter train line that runs loops around central Tokyo. But when it opened in 1885, it actually only ran a half loop outside of the city limits of Tokyo. It's hard to believe that very popular destinations today like Shinjuku or Shibuya back then were considered the outskirts, but they were. Anyways, over the next few decades, many private railways started building lines that connected to the Yamanote line. Passengers would take these private railways so they could transfer to the Yamanote line to complete their journey into the city limits. There were also some private streetcar companies operating within the city of Tokyo, but in 1911, they had all been taken over by the Tokyo city government. The city believed that streetcar service had to be consolidated and publicly run, and they applied that same philosophy to all railways. Many of the private companies wanted to extend into the city limits of Tokyo, connecting to the central business, commercial, and government districts. But in the 1920s, the city effectively banned these private companies from being able to do so. They did this by passing a law that made it illegal to have railroad crossings in the city limits. So if a railroad wanted to cross the street, they had to either dig underground or build an elevated overpass. This, of course, is super expensive for a private company to do, so they just stuck to the old system of going to the Yamanote line and then having their passengers transfer. In the 1930s, however, there was a second private company that was given permission to build a railway line downtown. The Tokyo Rapid Railway Company built a subway line from Shibuya to connect to the already existing Tokyo Underground Railway Company. And in 1939, when the two lines connected, they started operating as one service, creating what we know today as the Ginza Line. However, during World War II, that subway line was nationalized and a new agency was formed known as the Keito Rapid Transit Authority. 
Often known by its nickname Edan, this agency was part of the national government, but it did receive part of its money from the Tokyo government. The creation of Edan meant that Tokyo had given up its right to be able to build subway lines in the city. They could only run streetcars. After the war, there was a conflict between the Tokyo Metropolitan Government and Edan. The Tokyo government basically accused the other agency of being a remnant of the World War II Japanese government and completely ineffective. They thought that it should be the city's right to build all new subway lines, not Edan. So there was this conflict going on, and you know who was paying the closest attention to this? The private companies. They revived their hopes of running downtown, and they applied for permission to construct new lines into the Yamanote line. After all, Tokyo had expanded since then, and the old city limits didn't mean much anymore. I mean, can these public agencies really be trusted to construct new subway lines? Well, the Japanese government was not too thrilled about the idea of private companies just doing whatever they wanted in a city that was being reconstructed. It had the potential to mess with their urban planning. So they came up with the following solution. Edon would be responsible for all railway construction inside of the Yamanote line. But the private railways could then use those lines that Edon built to run their own trains into the city center. This is why so many Tokyo Metro lines today are different from most subways around the world. Most subway trains in different countries are standard gauge and get their electricity from a third rail. However, most of the Tokyo Metro lines are narrow gauge and get their power from an overhead wire because that's the way that the existing private railway companies were already set up. Adon would build a line and then these companies could run their train from the suburbs to the interchange station and then directly run their train into the subway, giving passengers a one seat ride into the city center. This is a concept known as through running, but now you know that that's the way it was designed in the first place. Through running was the idea. With the exception of the Ginza line and the Marunouchi line, which were the first two lines built, those are standard gauge and use a third rail. However, the Japanese government also acknowledged that giving one entity the responsibility to build all the subway lines they were planning was too much to ask. So they gave the Tokyo Metropolitan government permission to also construct some of the subway lines. These Tokyo government built lines started being called the Toei Subway, and the first line to open was the Asakusa line in 1960. Asakusa line, interestingly, is standard gauge because the private railways that it connects to are also standard gauge. The government plans where the lines run, and then either Edan or the Tokyo Metropolitan Government builds them and eventually operates them. All of them were built to connect directly to already existing lines, except for the Toei Oedo line, the newest of the four Toei subways, which uses linear motor cars, which is a form of magnetic propulsion similar to the Vancouver Skytrain, Detroit People Mover, JFK Airtrain, and so that one is an isolated system. Final chapter of the story, in 2004, Edon changes its name to Tokyo Metro as part of a corporate restructuring. Now, the Japanese government and the Tokyo government are stockholders in Tokyo Metro. This remains so until 2024, when they went public and some of their stocks are now available to be purchased by anybody. And that is why things are the way they are today. Tokyo has two separate but coexisting subway systems. It's a story full of surprise twists, drama, and careful urban planning. And while yes, there are definitely some things that can still be improved in terms of integrating the two, I still think that the Tokyo Network as a whole is one of the best subway systems in the entire world. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. Check us out on our other social media, and we'll see you next time.